Hi everyone, I'm Karen Lynn, and in a second here we're going to have the Viking, and um, or you can call me Eric, whatever you prefer. I'm coming. <laughs> we are here today discussing basically winter preps for spring in the garden. Now yes, we have an advantage because we live in coastal North Carolina and it was 48 degrees today, so a nice temperature to get out in the garden, and I know not all of you have that, but we're going to talk a little bit about you know, just a couple of things we do. We have what I call a colonial raised bed garden, um, which I'll have some pictures as well um, to share with you. But we're going to be talking about our colonial raised bed garden and, I mean, how we prepare it for spring. Yes, we have herb gardens and we have a few bucket gardens down there, but this is what we're going to be talking about. I mean, we're going to do this in all the gardens, but today we're we're going to be working here. I'm going, get, I'm going to get to it. There's one little spot. We're going to work right here. I knew I'd get to the point. Um, so if you want to go ahead and tell them where we're starting. with. Well, I guess we're starting by taking out the old plants. Okay. Uh, some people uh, will leave, uh, do like a no-till where you don't till the soil up and have things. Aerate just, it. Yeah. yeah, you just trim these off. And as these roots die off, they leave the soil kind of open uh, for drainage and oxygen. Um, but we're going to rake out this uh, pine straw. And I'm going to go get the rake. Just getting all this stuff out of here. It's important to get the weeds out. And they just, just so you know, it's super muddy here. Like, super. We had a lot of rain. It's probably not the most ideal. No, this isn't the most ideal timing, but our weekend is tight and we wanted to just kind of get the overall message to all of you how we do it here. So, I also we don't have a wheelbarrow over here, so. Our, we have to strike that into the yard. Okay, we're just going to rake it into the yard. Normally, we would put it into the wheelbarrow. Or a bucket. Or a bucket. Yeah, we love our buckets here. <laughs> and we use, sometimes we, even though we're here on a third of an acre, we we'll sometimes use the bucket backpack to move stuff around. If the wheelbarrow is full of something else, we'll, we'll just use that. It's, it's a handy little tool. We've actually got a surprise post coming up for that in the next month. Surprise! Surprise! Okay. So, I'm an, I left the, the harder work to the Viking, and he is turning up the soil. We're just going to use a little bit loose, more muscle. Very sandy. Um, we always add a little bit to it. This, We've added quite a bit. Yeah, one of the things I'm going to put in here. Oh, yes, we have a dumpster diving sign. Well, this. Well, not exactly a dumpster diving sign. This is, is not the, um, this is just a little bit of. Grummy medium, peat moss, oh, okay. basically okay. wood fiber. You know. Okay. I'll take that. And what is this? Compost from the compost pile. So we kind of try to use a variety. So we'll use some compost. We use a little bit of peat moss. Good for this one. That is some nicely cooked compost. That <laughs> smells beautiful. I have a thing for properly done compost. I actually teach our children um, at the elementary school where I work, or I used to do a little seminar with um, first grade and sometimes kindergarten and second grade about compost and how it should smell. And there's another friend. You want to walk that up to the camera because... Make sure the chickens don't get them. Well, when you see this in the garden, that's good. Um, and that is a very good sign that this plot's going to be nice and healthy and we might be able to hide it from the chickens. Chickens are going to get ready to get sectioned off back half of the yard. Um, they don't know about it yet, so don't tell them. we're keeping it top secret. I'm probably going to add some soil to this guy because we lost a little bit. Yeah, soil erosion, especially we when it rains here on our property, our house is that way, so the rain just goes all the way down. We have um, a small creek at the back end of the property. So These were the... Yes, here's the doctor bag find. I'm sorry, he had me pulled. It wasn't really dumpster. You may want to, well, not dumpster, um, habitat for humanity. And basically, these are pebbles that are used for aquaponics. And what do they do that's special? Expanded clay. Um, generally use them in aquaponics. I'm going to throw some in here just to help retain moisture into the soil. Uh, so basically, this whole entire process is what I mentioned. Um, I have an old podcast with the Survival Mom Radio Network. Um, basically about getting your garden ready for spring as well. It's not a video. And it talks about soil amendments. And that's what we're doing right here. We're, and some, he used to use mushroom compost. 
Okay. Pretty compost. I mean, that's just what we have. Okay. It just happened to be what we have. So, you know, amending the soil is crucial. And I mean, like right now, just the way this looks, I mean, it's just... Are you going to touch it? I was getting ready to. Then it's like, once I get dirty, I'm dirty. Just the way, just the way it looks. I mean, it's just, it's really beautiful, nice soil. It's ready. It's ready to get some seeds in it soon, and I can't wait. That's my job here at Little Suburban Homestead, is I plant all the seeds on the property. I organize the seeds, pretty much that task has fallen to me. I mean, that's the thing, when you're running a homestead, we have to take on jobs, and I certainly don't want to be the one that's turning over the soil, for the most part. I go to the gym. <laughs> um, okay, so what next? Well, the next, um, we want to get all the weeds out, whether you right. turn the soil over. Some of the big ones we'll just pull out. Right. Um, they do take a lot of uh, nutrients from the soil. You know. And if we decide if we were going to leave the onions in a little longer, or are we just going to go ahead and turn this over? I don't know. They look they they still look it. healthy. They made, they made it. We might let them go to seed. We'll let these guys go to seed. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And we'll have some for next year. And Sometimes I'll find things in the garden like uh, these palm trees. Um, it's a palmetto tree, basically. Uh, you can see the seed. Is that a pendo palm? Yeah, pendo palm. Pendo palm. Um, nice little tree. And I'll go plant this in a pot. Maybe after a year or two, it'll be uh, sellable. We, you know, we haven't done a lot of it, but we also sell some of our plants at the local, um, you know, hobby greenhouse sale. So, you know, it's a great place to stay in touch with other gardeners. I always encourage everybody to join you know, gardening groups, gardening clubs, it's where you're going to learn about what grows, you know, well in your area, especially those, you know, those um, plants that are native to your area. Those are, the, those are the most fun to grow because they will be prolific. They'll thrive. They'll thrive, and you'll feel like a really successful gardener. So there's that. We're going to set it aside. I have people all the time that say, what is y'all's secret? And right now the yard, I'm going to just say it looks atrocious, it looks messy. You know, in the summer though, we've got vertical plants growing. There's food all over the yard. I mean, it's kind of exciting to walk out in your garden and see food everywhere. This guy's not very pretty, but it's a wild uh, muscadine. Yes, yeah, so we grow, we grow so muscadine grapes at the back of the property. I just have to laugh because the last time we were out here filming, the, the wind was like yeah. blowing and the wind hasn't been blowing all day. And we finally, we waited because the lighting is so good right now. And then now the wind is roaring, <laughs> so we just can't win. <laughs> can't win. We, yeah. <laughs> um, so another thing that we need to talk about, because the next step with this would be mulching. Know, using those different types of mulch, like you can use leaves, you can use wood chips. Um, some people, like especially where they don't have a lot of access to, you know, if we have a ton of access to pine straw. We're here in North Carolina. If you don't have a ton of access to that, you can even use newspapers. That's free, right in the dumpster. Well, the pine straw um, is good for acidic. Right, plants. that's true. We don't. Use, I mean, it's a case by case basis with the mulch. Um, we use the uh, leaves is what we use. You want to get some so we could just no, we get some more uh, charcoal. More charcoal. Oh, we're that too. Okay, so he's adding a little bit of ash. And while we're waiting on him, um, and I don't know if you can see the chickens over here, but this is a, one of our secrets too is really letting the chickens go to the garden in the winter. And you know, now we once we once we redo all the beds, we're not going to want them on this side well actually once we plant the seeds we're not going to want them on this side but chickens are great helpers on the homestead when they aren't tearing things apart <laughs> they can eat bugs and stuff they plants. eat bugs and they help get your soil kind of you know amended and so that's all good stuff so in this garden or this bed he's going to um try to get to everything but we're going to leave those beautiful healthy onions right in the middle and that's the other thing we technically were talking about should we go ahead and plant some kale or Swiss chard today because we can this time of year. I mean, it's a little risky, but we probably could. We could probably plant some mustard greens too. Might wait a week. We might, yeah. The thing about these onions, um, if you find something that you like that grows well, let that one plant go to seed. 
you have seeds from that plant that did well for the next year. Exactly. So you know it'll do well. And I, an example of that is, and I was really stubborn because I kept telling people I don't like collards. And I know I live in North Carolina, but I was really born in Virginia. And then I would tell people, I don't like collards. I'm not going to eat them. Well, you know what it was? I had never had collards properly made. So, for me. Well, sh like a chef. So, we met somebody and they were telling us how they braised their collards with bacon. Well, guess what? I love collards. My brother sent me. <laughs> you figured it yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> bacon makes everything better. And my brother had sent us some collard seeds. And I was kind of stubborn about planting them. And he said, you'll love them. And I think um, the Viking planted them actually unbeknownst to me. And I'm telling you what. Fresh collards in your own backyard, braised with bacon, great food. It's all paleo because for those that follow me know that I mostly eat paleo and gluten free. And it's delicious, wasn't it? It is good. Yeah. We are planting some collards very soon. So, what's up next for us? I don't know. Any new news? Homestead news? No, <laughs> no gardening news. <laughs> is there anything else we could do to this bed? Like, uh. to get it ready for winter or are you telling me that we're going to spend the next hour, like we're going to turn the video off and spend the next hour redoing all Probably. these Probably, and then we can come back to the video. But if it were earlier in the fall, uh, Nobody could can see do, this in the, <laughs> oh, it's like, do this in the fall and get a nice cover of mulch over, probably leaves, and they'll start to decompose. Um, but since it's January, are we going to put a layer of mulch? I thought no. we would put a light layer. No? No, we'll just, because if we're going to plant some cold weather stuff in the next week or two, we're going to plant then mulch over top of once, once the season starts coming up. Okay, so there Might you go. Might some of this kale we got in the dark in the greenhouse. Yeah, and before we go, tell them what all we have in the greenhouse. Um, we went in there mm. the other night and took a little tour. I'll tell you some of the stuff that stood out to me is... Um, well, we have a plant that's not an orange tree. It's not a tangerine tree. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but it grows, it grows native in North Carolina outside as, an, as a citrus tree. Um, and we have peppers growing in there that are beautiful. And I will put some pictures in at the end of the video. Um, what else do we have? Oh, tomato, the Cherokee tomato. It's a Cherokee cherry tomato. My friend Catherine hooked us up with that. Best tomato ever and it loves North Carolina sandy kind of environment. And, we'll take um, some cuttings from that. Definitely. And you know you need to research your environment. This show isn't about you know plants in general but you need to research your environment because we had an expert come talk to us at our gardening club and said North Carolina, this part of North Carolina was not the best part of North Carolina to try to grow those big, fat, lush, red tomatoes. And once I like got over that and just started planting cherry tomatoes, we had just a ton of them. And, you know, they're delicious. So, anyway, but um, we've enjoyed being here and sharing about what we do to prep, you know, our garden in the winter for spring. So, want to go shut us, shut us off? off? Go shut us off? Okay. All right, guys. And, um, you can always find us at littlesuburbanhomestead.com. These are some habanero peppers that we have growing in the greenhouse currently in the middle of January. And this is our satsuma tree, which um, actually grows in North Carolina quite well. It's a citrus tree.